Hello and welcome to the Hype Math channel. My name is Miss Math. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. Miss Math, how can fun and math be in the same sentence? I know, but it's so true. Students who have fun and play games while learning math are able to really solidify those math concepts that they need. Kind of like a covert operation because they're having fun, they're being exciting, they're having a little fun competition while in the background they are able to improve their math skills. So in today's video, I want to share six fun math games that you can play with your kiddo using playing cards. Let's dive in. So the first game is Go Fish with the Spin. Most people have played Go Fish, but in this game, what players are going to do is try and get pairs that equal to 10. So for instance, if I have a six, I'm going to ask my opponent if they have a four. Why? Because six plus four is equal to 10. And if I have a three, I'm going to ask my opponent if they have a 7 because, again, that value is equal to 10. This is a great way for students to start seeing what two number values equal 10. So, again, go fish with pairs that equal 10. That's the first game. Let's take a look at the second game. Calculate the gain or loss. This is a great way for students to be able to practice addition and subtraction. So what they're going to do is start with the value of 20. Now, the black cards that they have, they will add to the number, and for the red cards, they will subtract. So let's look at our example. We have 20, because we always start off with 20, and then they have a three, they draw a three from the deck, the black three from the deck. That means they need to add 20 plus three. That is equal to 23. Then when they add, uh, pull another card from the deck, well, it's a red eight. So that means they need to subtract. 23 minus 8 is equal to 15. Now, you can decide how many cards each player within that um, series will pull. Do you want to pull two, 2 or 3, then stop and let the next player go. Now, the player that ends up with the greatest score or the highest score at the end they are the winner. So that is calculate the gain or loss. And again, this is a great way for students to practice their addition and subtraction skills, not only for one digit number, but for two digit numbers as well. Our next game is card turnover and add. So what's gonna happen is one player will have the stack of cards and they will flip over two cards from the deck. Now they are able to play this game as well. So I don't know if you as a parent wanna be the player that flips the card because what you really wanna do is have your kids look and be able to quickly add and shout out the correct answer while you're flipping the cards. So again, whenever you flip over two cards, whoever correctly adds and shouts out the answer first, they are able to get the cards. And you continue on until the deck is finished and the player with the most cards, they are the winner. Now, you are able to use face cards with this game. And the king, the queen, the jack, those are the face cards. They will have a value of 10 and the ace will have a value of one. If you're dealing, if you're playing with younger students, you can have the option of taking those face cards out and just dealing with the numbers and also the ace, just so that they can practice adding one. Totally up to you. Let's look at our example. We have a queen plus a five, so that is 10 plus five. That's equal to 15, and we said that our ace is equal to one, so one plus two is equal to three. And again, 
whoever is able to correctly add the numbers and then shout them out first, that is the one who gets the cards. That is card turnover and add. Now we have another card turnover game. That's card turnover and multiply. Same premise, but instead of adding the cards, they will multiply the numbers. And again, you can have those face cards in there. They will still have the value of 10. And the face cards again are the king, the queen, and the jack and the ace will have the value of one. So in our example, we have the queen, so that's 10 times five is equal to 50, and then for that ace, that's equal to one, times two is equal to two. These are really great ways, again, of students being able to practice their addition facts and their multiplication facts as well. Close call addition. With close call addition, each player will take four cards from the deck. And what they're going to do is they're going to try and arrange their cards so that they can add them together and get to the value of 100 as close as possible without going over. Now, you will use the ace and it will equal one, but take out the face cards for this game. So in our example, we have our cards are four, six, two, and eight. And what the player did was arrange them so that they have 46 plus 28, which is equal to 74. And then another player has for their cards, the seven, the nine, the ace, and the five. So they have 79 plus 15, and that is equal to 94. This player wins that point because 94 is greater than 74. Again, a great game to use for to help students with practicing two-digit addition. Our last game is largest place value. So each player will take either three cards or four cards. So how do you determine how many cards you give your player or how many cards you want the players to have? It really depends on the age of your kids. So if you have three cards, that's to the hundreds place. So that would be for students from kindergarten to second grade. And if you have third grade to maybe fifth grade, you would pull four cards because that would be to the thousands place even five cards if you have um, upper elementary like fifth grade like I said that's to the ten thousands place totally up to you and these games are flexible because as I'm talking you may have ideas that you want to come up with your own um, that you want to play with your kids again for them to have fun while they are secretly improving their math skills. So for large place value, again, determining if you want to give um, three cards or four cards. In our example, we have four cards. And what the player is going to do is they want to arrange their cards so that they have the largest number. So in our example, the player on the left has a four, six, two, and eight. So they want to, if they're trying to get the largest number, they are going to range their cards in order of eight, six, four, and two, which is 8,642. And a great thing to do, just like I did, was once they arrange that number, have them say it, because again, they're able to practice what the numbers are secretly learning Again, place value and also get, getting that good, solid practice and foundation in math. For the right-hand player, they have seven, nine, the ace, we know counts as one, and five. So this player arranged their cards with nine, seven, five, and then the ace, and that is 9,751. They would be the winner on the right hand side because their number is larger than the number on the left. And that is it. Those are the six games.
fun games, fun math games, like I said before, that you can play with your kiddos to help them improve their math skills while having a great time. My name is Miss Math. I'll talk to you later.